Good day. My name is James Bell. I am here at Missoula Public Library and I'm finishing up a three-part series of working with salt and spice. Uh, we've been doing some curing and learning a little bit about that. Uh, I would like to thank the Public Library for having me here and I feel special for uh, being one of the first people to see the inside of the place. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to MCAT today for showing up and doing these courses for myself and multiple other people. Uh, today to finalize um, this three course series I'm going to start out with what we left off with last week. And this is the finished product of the gel, the guajole. Now I handed this project off to a friend, uh, somebody that's helped me out here. And let them take care of the process and this is what they came up with. As far as hanging and curing the guajole after it had been sitting in its rub for a little over a week. So the hanging process, very nice. Uh, this person did a very good job of keeping the guajole together. It's not moldy. And we're just going to take a look at this final piece here. Oh, what a wrapping job. <laughs> yeah. Did you take a knots class? Uh, see, you should work on a sailboat. Anyway, this is the final product here. Very nicely wrapped. And it's only gone for what a little little over 16 days now. So you could either choose to leave it hanging longer. Uh, this is really looking nice. And at this point, you could actually, and we'll probably actually have a slice before the end of the day, but you slice this nice and thin, it's ready to eat right there. So very good job to my friend for taking care of this. It's kind of like one of those projects you have in uh, high school when you have to carry an egg around for a week and make sure it doesn't break, but that looks really good. So anyway, that curing project went well. Like I said, that was around 16 days of hanging time. And uh, yeah, it looks, looks awesome. You can eat this, like I said, slice nice and thin throw it in your mouth, eat it, or uh, you can use it in, in beans. Uh, you can throw it into, like I was saying, a carbonara sauce or any, any kind of meat sauce. Uh, it's a good product. So I'm going to start today for the duck confit by going through, uh, well this is my this is my finished product here of the confit itself. It's sitting in its oil. Once you get it to this stage, you have a month. They, uh, a lot of people would say a month at this point. Uh, you could go even longer. Um, it's a really good preserving technique. It's sitting in its own fat. In this case, I added uh, some canola oil to extend the fat. Um, but I'm going to go through the process of getting to this stage, which involves breaking down the duck. Um, I like to wear gloves when I'm 
handling raw meat. I know if you're at home, uh, if you don't necessarily have gloves, then just wash your hands like we're already doing a lot of these days. So I'm gonna start out by chopping this garlic, which is going into the, the cure. And I'll be adding these spices to it sometime. Okay, so one of the reasons I chose duck for the finishing class here is because, well, we're in the duck hunting season. We're close to Thanksgiving and hopefully some of you hunters out there have scored yourselves a duck. And I was going to go through the idea that a lot of times when you are hunting and you do score a duck, uh, the simplest process of removing the feathers is to simply take the skin off. At this point, I obviously have a farm raised duck and they will contain more fat than a wild duck. So the simplest method that I know of, if you are a hunter and you don't wanna remove the skin and you want to keep some feathers is to dip the duck into a boiling pot of hot water. You loosen up the fat and the feathers come away easily. So with that being said, what I do when I'm gonna start butchering a duck is I, I would be removing the feathers from the head down. So what I'm gonna do with the duck is I'll remove the meat itself starting on one side of the rib cage to the other and I'll go from the head down in order to remove the meat. And by doing this today uh, what I really wanted to demonstrate is the complete utilization of animals uh, and really easy ways to do it. Once again, I had mentioned in my last class, if you're not comfortable with breaking down animals, then you can just give it to your butcher and ask them for what you want. If you are comfortable with breaking down your animals, then you have the opportunity to save every piece of meat and utilize it in fat in this case. So what I've done here is I've gone once again from the head down. I've disconnected the wing at its joint I'm going back through and I'm disconnecting the leg and thigh at its joint. Okay. So in the sake for time, I'm only going to uh, demonstrate one side of the duck as far as removing fat and everything. So now that I've got this part removed from the other part, <laughs> I will uh, remove the breast from the leg and thigh. Set that aside. I'm gonna remove the wing where the joint was connected to the carcass, and I'll leave that 
Now at this point, this is where I want to start saving the fat. And this is what I'm going to use in the rendering of the fat in order to do a duck confit. So once you get all the fat removed, which is what I'm doing here, I save these little pieces of duck meat for stocks, which is what will happen with the carcass of the duck. It will become a stock. Fat will become rendered and turned into the fat that you use for the confit. So this is basically what you're looking for in a clean duck breast. You've got all the dirty bits off. You've got a nice amount of fat to where you can also use to uh, as a protective layer for your duck breast. Uh, when I cook my duck breast, I like to uh, make some cross hatches and then you put it into a nice warm pan with some of your rendered duck fat and you let it set skin side down in the pan until it becomes crispy and then at that point you'll you'll also see a rendering process uh, the fat rendering itself down uh, pretty much the same as what you're doing with bacon uh, later on, I'll demonstrate also, once I go into the, uh, the confit process, uh, the idea that you can actually cure the breast in a similar manner to what uh, we did with the jowl and turned into the guajole. So as you can see here, I still have some excess fat. Now I'm going to remove that. I like to leave enough on so that when I'm done confiting my duck, I like to put it pan side or skin side down, I should say, into a warm pan and get the skin nice and crispy. Once again, I'll introduce a couple of different ideas and ways that you can utilize uh, the duck confit once it is completed. So this is pretty much about what you want to get to. I do a little cross around the leg and that will help me to uh, get a little bit of the salt and sugar in there and then when the comfy is done, you'll actually have a little bit of bone and it'll release a lot easier from uh, the bone itself, depending on what you want to do with it. So, for at this point, I would take this and because I'm not going to actually be cooking here really today, what you do is you'll take the fat, submerge it with just enough water to cover, put it onto the stove and you'll let the water reduce out of it. And what is happening there is the fat starts to melt off and then it'll keep releasing the fat so that you have a good fat to comfy your duck in. Like I said with this, I added some canola oil because I ended up with enough fat to cover completely my duck and it's a really easy process I'll, that will be included in, into the recipe uh, that will be online so what I've got here is my garlic my fresh garlic obviously I'm going to use two bay leaves I'm doing two, uh, one for each, each leg. And like I said, I'm, I'm gonna 
finish my process of cutting up the duck right here. But I'm gonna warm up a couple bay leaves. I'm toasting off uh, four cardamom pods. One star anise. And about a tablespoon worth of black pepper. So I'm doing this here today, even though you can't smell it. Uh, there are a few people here in the building that can. Uh, be a very nice aromatic. So basically what I do is I warm this up until I can start to smell it. And when it gets to that point, I'm gonna crush it up. Uh, and what I have here, I've got one full cup of salt, kosher salt is what I used, and then a quarter cup of sugar. And that's gonna be the main base of our cure here. Okay, so with this uh, same cure, as I mentioned earlier, you can also use that cure in order to rub down the duck breast, which once again, I'm not gonna do here today because I plan on eating these for Thanksgiving and I don't really wanna cure a uh, duck breast today. I will save one, but as I mentioned, what you do is similar to what you do with the guajole. You take it, you rub it liberally with your whatever spices you like, the salt, the sugar, you let it set for uh, a week if you want to in the cure. Duck breast uh, really takes it on a little faster than the pork gel, so I would say maybe more like four days at the most. Then you hang it to dry for maybe a week, two weeks, once again. And you've got something that you can slice thin, uh, kind of like the guajole, you can eat it raw or you can use it as a substitute for bacon if that's what you like. As I mentioned, when you're working with raw meat, please keep your hands clean, not only for the safety of yourself, but for the safety of others. So I'm starting to get the aromatics here off of this. Let it go for just a little bit longer. Like I said, once I do, I'll crush up the uh, spices, add it to the salt and sugar mixture, and then we'll liberally coat up this duck. Okay, so I have the spices ready to go. Throwing them into the pestle mortar here. I'm just gonna crunch them up. Doesn't have to be anything fine. Just enough to uh, be able to dis dis uh, distribute itself, excuse me, for uh, throughout the salt and sugar mixture. So once again, as I said, liberal amounts of salt and sugar. Salt is the main thing for the curing. Uh, sugar just adds a nice little uh, flavor aspect to it. So, Got a pretty good amount of salt and sugar and spice in here. I'm gonna go uh, skin side down. Rub it quite well. This is honestly the amount of salt and sugar that I have in here, as well as the spice, is gonna be enough to cure this. 
So once you've got the seasoning well distributed over the duck confit itself, just let it sit out. Keep rubbing it until you're ready to put it into the refrigerator and let it set for uh, 24, 48 hours. Uh, if you're for some reason in a crunch, you can uh, add lots and lots of salt to it and just keep rubbing it and you can have it done within a few hours. I actually forgot to add the garlic to this. Here's some garlic in this. Um, I, I have added to some of these cures also a citrus. Uh, you can add a, a orange, you can add little lemon, just peel it off, cut it up. Once again, as long as it's distributed throughout the salt and sugar cure properly, you'll have what you need. But this is pretty much what you're looking for to have sitting around for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, cover it, put it in the refrigerator when you're done with it, and just let it set. It'll release some of its juices, it'll firm up. And then when you're ready to get it finished, what you do is you just wipe it down. You don't have to run it under water or anything like that with a dry towel. And then you cover it with your fat and you put it into the oven for, oh, anywhere from two to four hours. If you want to get it to the point to where you can remove it easily from the bone, let it go a little bit longer. If you want to keep it on the bone, which I, I is one of my favorite things, I like the crispy skin on the duck, I will uh, let it go for about two to three hours in the oven at 225, covered and submerged in its fat. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I can think of uh, as far as the curing process goes for the duck. Um, if you wanted to roast a whole duck over the holidays and not break it down at all until dinner time, you can do a nice uh, same kind of rub on it uh, so let it sit overnight on the duck itself and it'll, it'll just get that flavoring in there for you and it'll turn out real nice in the oven. Uh, if you want to roast a whole duck also, you want to go at a higher temperature. I like to start at about 450 for maybe an hour on a whole duck and then turn it down to the same temperature that I'd be confiting the duck in about 225 and just let it go slow. Um, so as a, a suggestion for the holidays, something that's real easy to do. And I think uh, quite a few people are familiar with is a cassoulet. Uh, it's pretty uh, traditional French, which um, Comfy is also. Uh, the cassoulet, simply white beans, you can use the guajole as a part of your fat in the beans. You can also use your uh, duck fat in, in, in the cooking process of the beans with some onions, some garlic, uh, whatever seasonings you like. Um, if you don't really want to eat the, the fat of the duck, the comfy at this point, when it's finished, should be tender enough to where you can pull it right off the bone and you can just add it into the beans and you can serve your beans with Brussels sprouts, fried Brussels sprouts, baked Brussels sprouts, uh, kale, anything like that really go nice together. But yeah, as far as the, the curing sessions go, that's probably the best information I have for you. Uh, I would like to show that the library does have a really nice display of books over here that have been picked out just to
throw up so that maybe the idea of coming to the library and sitting around and reading about food and continue your interest in food uh, is easily available. Um, hopefully I'll be doing some more sessions in the future. But as for now, yeah, we've got Guajole. Um, we've got the duck confit in, a, in, a, in the works. And we've got the duck confit finished here, which I guess I could pull out and show you. Okay, so this is the finished duck confit. And the reason it is in a jar, and I guess I could finish with this, is because traditionally this is how it would have been preserved back in the day. And once again, it would be held uh, before refrigeration, um, probably in, into a little area that was dug into the ground. But you can hold it up for months and months. And it'll stay well preserved in its fat. It's been cured. And it is tasty. Um, yeah, before I finish the day, I would also like to uh, thank a movable feast for letting me use the kitchen that is available there uh, in order to do all of this and also to give me uh, some of the utensils and tools that I've been using uh, throughout the process. Uh, it's been very helpful and I would like, like to think that uh, people enjoy cooking, enjoy good food and if you're interested in uh, any kind of different techniques, um, well, come to the library and look it up, get a book, read, enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>